A power supply is a device that feeds the necessary voltage to an electrical or electronic device, taking energy from power lines, whether they are household or industrial. The first power supplies were linear, and they have just a few components, so they are quite simple and easy to repair. Let's see how a linear power supply works. Imagine we need a power supply delivering 12 volts DC and it needs a 120 volts AC input. AC, that is alternating current, reverses its direction 60 times per second. The first component of the power supply is a transformer which steps down the incoming voltage to 120 volts AC to 12 volts also AC. The next component is a group of diodes, which convert the AC from the transformer, turning it into pulsating DC. A very common diode array is the bridge rectifier. This arrangement uses four diodes. Diodes have the virtue of conducting the current only in one direction. For the sake of this explanation, we will assume that the current flows freely through each diode in the direction shown by the arrows. When the current coming from the power line flows one way, it goes freely through the diodes identified as 1 and 4. With this, if we have a 12 volts DC light bulb connected to the output of the supply, current will flow in the direction shown by the arrows. When the current from the power line reverses direction, remember this happens 60 times every second, it goes freely through diodes 2 and 3. The current will flow in the direction shown by the arrows. We can see that current flows through the light bulb always in the same direction. This way, the alternating current, which is constantly reversing its direction, is now turned into pulses that always go in the same direction thereby achieving a pulsating DC. For a very simple usage, such as charging a battery or turning on a light bulb, this would be all you need in a 12 volt power supply. For using with more delicate equipment, other factors must be taken into consideration. First, the lack of regulation. Since the rectification process produces two pulses for each cycle, 120 pulses are produced in one second. At the peak of each pulse, the voltage reaches a value of 1.414 times the normal value. That is, an effective voltage of 12 volts reaches 16.97 volts at the highest point of each pulse. A delicate electronic device can be destroyed or at least overheated under such circumstances. The second problem is lack of filtering. Even when our supply is already providing a direct current, that is, a current always flowing in the same direction, it will be still delivering a pulsating current. To operate almost any electronic system, the voltage must be absolutely steady without going up to 16.97 volts or going down to zero volts. Here is where another component comes into play, the capacitor. The capacitor acts as a small reservoir which stores energy when the supply delivers its maximum voltage. At the intervals in which the supply is not delivering any voltage, the capacitor delivers its charge to the output of the power supply, so the input voltage looks somewhat like a constant value. However, the voltage delivered by the supply still contains a pulsating component, which is known as ripple or hum, and is heard as a very annoying background sound in radio receivers and audio amplifiers. To avoid this, it's necessary to add some more filtering components, both capacitors and inductors. This increases the cost of the supply, its complexity, its size and weight since the components, especially the transformer and the filtering elements, can be quite bulky. Taking all this into account, we will now consider another type of power supply, which overcomes all these drawbacks, the switching power supply. The switching power supply is much more efficient than the linear power supply. 
The same performance can be obtained with much smaller and lighter components. The transformer itself, which steps down the voltage, is much more efficient, lighter, and takes up about one-fifth of the space than a normal transformer. The filtering components are also smaller and their output is virtually ripple-free. The efficiency of this type of supply is so great that even a small fan is enough to dissipate the heat produced by operation. On the other hand, its regulation is excellent, very suitable for delicate electronic components such as microprocessor, data storage devices, and other high precision devices. Let's see how it works. First, we have to rectify the current from the power line in order to get a DC voltage. This is done by a diode bridge at a relatively higher voltage. It also uses filters. At high voltages, the current consumption is low and it's easier to reduce the ripple or hum. Next, an oscillator circuit is used to deliver a square pulse signal at a much higher frequency in the order of 20,000 to 100,000 cycles per second. This signal drives a pair of FET type transistors which operate as switches, thus turning power on and off, wasting very little energy as heat since they never conduct halfway, but their work cycle is either zero or maximum just as a switch going off or on. The pulse siding output of these transistors is fed to a transformer with a pulverized iron code called ferrite, which virtually eliminates the loss by hysteresis and eddy currents. And also, the transformer can be very small and can operate at lower temperature. An additional diode bridge rectifies the output of such transformer delivering a pulsating high-frequency DC, supersonic, since it is totally inaudible, which can be filtered very easily with a small capacitor. The oscillator circuit delivering the square signal to the FETs is inside an integrated circuit which can modulate the pulse width so a regulated voltage can be obtained at the output of the transformer. On top of that, you can take a sample of the output voltage and feed the oscillator circuit so that the output is automatically regulated to the desired level. The transformer can include several secondaries with their respective diodes and filters, thus having a multiple voltage power supply. By merely regulating one of the outputs, all other outputs will be regulated. Modern computers are possible thanks to switching power supplies. A small switching power supply delivers all necessary outputs, both positive and negative, and at various voltages as needed by a PC. In comparing both types of power supplies, the linear type supplies are simple, reliable, and have good regulation, which can be improved by adding some electronic gadgets. They are also easier to repair and maintain. Their drawbacks are its inefficiency, high cost, as well as being bulky and heavy. On the other hand, switching power supplies are highly efficient. They have good regulation. They are lighter and very inexpensive. The most noticeable drawbacks are its complexity and hard to repair and maintain. Perhaps one of the most annoying drawbacks of these small devices is the large amount of electromagnetic interference they produce. They interfere with the operation of other electronic systems. Since they work on square waves, they generate a large amount of harmonics sent out as electromagnetic waves that practically cancel out the reception of AM, amplitude modulation. There is roughly a review of the differences between the two types of power supplies that have greatly boosted electronics technology. I hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.